Good morning and welcome to worship. A couple of announcements today. Um, next week, we will be gathering in person for worship for anyone that chooses to join us that way at 1015. And we'll have all the same safety precautions in place that we had before when we opened for worship. So um, masks and sitting apart from each other and no congregational singing. But we will have worship in person for anyone who chooses to join us. And then at 11 o'clock after worship next week, we will have our annual meeting. For those who wish to join us for their, the annual meeting at home, we have a way for you to do that. You can join us on Zoom and you can do this simply on your phone. And so if you're unsure, if you don't have a device with a camera, let us know. And all you have to do is call a number and then there's a, they'll ask for an ID number that you put in and we'll help you out. And we are just so confident that we can help you to um, do this if you've not used Zoom before. We really think that um, we've been using it for counsel, so we feel confident about it. And we want anyone who wants to be a part of the annual meeting but does not feel comfortable being in the building, we want you to feel free to be a part of it and we want you to be included. So please contact us and we will get you set up and um, we, will, we will have that in place. So next week, in-person worship, annual meeting after worship. Next week, there will be no drive-up communion. This day, though, after worship, I will be outside for drive-up communion. And even as we have our in-person worship, we will continue to broadcast our worship through Facebook Live and send out a link. So that will continue to be available online as we gather in person. And we begin worship today with an order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, your sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice in the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen.
Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance, and your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. The Gospel for today is taken from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, 
Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What does this story mean? You know, maybe it's not supposed to mean anything. Maybe the gospel writer recorded it so that we could experience a little bit of what the disciples experienced at the beginning when Jesus said, follow me. I imagine that the beginning of their Jesus journey felt full of newness and wondering and mystery and maybe even a little bit of intrigue. Some deep knowing and at the same time really not knowing at all. The gospel lets us in on this little moment when they stumble upon Jesus, the one who would change everything forever. All of us have some different stumbling upon moments in our lives when something happens and sometimes we know and sometimes we don't, but often we get this little feeling that something is about to change. We're a kid and a coach comes up to us and says, I hope you try out. Or we meet eyes with someone and that person ends up becoming our future spouse. Or we circle an ad in the newspaper with a red marker. Or maybe you've had the experience of walking in a building you've never been in before and suddenly getting the feeling you're home. I'm talking about the moments of finding and being found. And the gospel today is one such moment for Nathaniel. And it begins as Philip is found by Jesus, his friend. And then Philip finds Nathaniel and says, Hey, we found the one that Moses and the prophets have been talking about all along. And guess what? It's Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And when Nathaniel hears this right away, he's suspicious. And he says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Which makes you wonder, what was it about Nazareth? Was Nazareth like a really little town, maybe like Sharon? Did Nathaniel grow up in, Na in Nazareth and feel like, now there's just no way that the Messiah could come out of Nazareth? But Philip says to him simply, just come and see. It's a no strings attached invitation. He doesn't try to convince him. He just basically says, come on and see for yourself. So together they go to see Jesus. And immediately Jesus sees Nathanael. He really sees him. And he makes an interesting comment. He says, here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How could Jesus know that about Nathanael? That he was so honest and good before Nathanael had even spoken a word. And Nathaniel hears it, and he's, he's kind of taken aback by it. And he says, well, where did you get to know me? And Jesus says to him, well, obviously under the fig tree. And we're all left to wonder, what is it about that fig tree? I have a group of pastors that I meet with on Tuesdays, and we talk about the gospel for the week, and we help each other prepare for our sermon. And you should have heard us speculate about the fig tree. I think you probably would have thought it was pretty funny. We got very carried away. We were wondering, what is the biblical significance of the fig tree? And somebody said, has anybody been to the Holy Land? Have you seen a fig tree? Can you take a nap under a fig tree? Somebody asked, have you tasted a fig? Is, is it sweet? Maybe it's about the goodness, the sweetness of God. So we had all these conversations and we finally came to the conclusion that the significance of the fig tree was something only known to Jesus and Nathaniel. Something significant had happened to Nathaniel under the fig tree, and Jesus knew about it. 
It was for Nathaniel truly a moment of being seen, of being found. And when he heard Jesus say, I saw you under the fig tree, he knew that Jesus had an unusual insight about Nathaniel, and he believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Nathaniel was going about his regularly scheduled business when Philip said, come and see. And in this moment of seeing Jesus, his life was about to change forever. It was the greatest stumbling upon moment of his life. It was the best and most wonderful thing that would ever happen to him. It was God's grace. It was invitation. It was new life. It was surprise. And when we have these moments, these stumbling upon moments, especially the ones that are ordained by God, they can feel so deeply personal, and they are. When God comes to us, when we are known, when we are seen, when we're surprised by something and it feels like something was meant to be, they're personal, but if they're ordained by God, what is going to happen is that we're going to find out that this moment of calling has not just to do with us, but it has to do with the community. It is beyond ourselves. And Jesus could see this amazement in Nathanael, and he said to him, Did you know that I was the king of Israel when I said the thing about the fig tree? Well, you're going to see even more than that. And you are going to see the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Then we have like another interesting thing, like what does that mean? Well, there's a biblical thing that happens in the Old Testament. Remember when Jacob saw angels going up and down on the ladder when he was having his vision by the river? Uh, so there's that, and I, I really think that there's something going on there. And I also came across something this week um, from one of the commentaries I read where the author James Howell state stated that Nathaniel would witness traffic between heaven and earth. I thought that was a really neat way of talking about what Jesus was saying, that Nathaniel was going to see the divine and the human have a bridge cross, that Nathaniel was going to see through this journey with Jesus, God coming down to God's people in need, down to the earth again and again and again the human experiencing the divine. Who would have known that Philip's humble invitation of come and see would lead to his life joining with the life, resurrection, and death of Jesus, the King of Israel. Jesus finds each of us under our own proverbial fig trees and he invites us to follow. He finds us in baptism. He finds us through invitations that are surprises from other people in our beloved community. And in that community, we are seen and known as Nathaniel was. James Howell, the commenter that I referenced before, also reminded in his writing that tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And in his famous speech, he imagined God's future as one in which we will not be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. The community of Christ is one where we are seen for who we really are, children of God. And it's a community where we learn to see others for who they really are, children of God. And when we really see each other, we see God. Following Jesus leads to amazing discoveries about who God is and where God is to be found and where God was all along. Come and see. Amen.
Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have mercy, Have mercy O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For police and firefighters, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. For peace in our nation this week as we inaugurate a new president, and for guidance for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as they begin their leadership, that you instill in them wisdom and compassion. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, that God console all who suffer, for the family of Brianna and for the ones we know in need of your care, whom we name before you now. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, we would be collecting our offering, our offering prayer. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace, amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive this blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Uh, just a reminder that I'll be outside if you would like to receive communion. So I'll be there until 1115. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>